Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I am here to bring you a wig review. I have on Night by Ellen Villa in the color Candy Blonde Rooted, which is 101.27.60 with an 8 root. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love, love, love this hair. I cannot wait to tell you all about the hair, all about the cap, all about the color. I will show you this color outside. I have an out of the box. It had terrible box hair, so I'm excited to show you the out of the box as well. And I just have to give a shout out to Ellen Villa US. I had messaged both Deborah and Georgia on the um, yeah, on their Instagram pages to find out what color this root is because there's no way the root is included in that code. 101. Dot, what did I say it was? 101.27.60. This is way darker than any of those. So I wanted to know what color the rooting was. They came through for me and they told me it's an eight root. So we will talk about the rooting on this as well. So before we get too far into this, let me show you this piece from all sides. I do have her clipped up because I want to show you the mini, mini lace front. I'll be pulling that down. If you are looking for a piece for summer, I think this could be one for you. I am really a fan, so I'm going to share why I am such a fan. But, so I can show you what this front looks like down, I'm just going to get right to this mini lace front and show that to you. So this has the tiniest little lace front. It's like that. That is all. At first, I thought it was very pointless. I figured, why even bother? But I can clip it up just a little bit right there in the front and it looks so realistic and it allows me to do that if this were a full basic cap i wouldn't be able to do that i'm so appreciative of it i will warn you though i did hear from a wig sister on a facebook group that her lace front wouldn't lay flat for her and so she didn't know the, she was kind of upset actually upset about them them even including it since it was kind of pointless so I'm not having that issue. It is laying totally flat for me, but I just want to share there's always varying opinions on things. So let me show you what she looks like when she's not clipped up. Because if you were to have a similar experience, then it might not matter because these bangs are relatively short right here. There's like some longer pieces and some shorter pieces. So if you wanted to wear this like full on bang, you're just gonna have to do a little bit of trimming. A lot of the bang here is, is short enough for me. There's just a few pieces that aren't. But I just, I wore her all day yesterday before I even really realized this had that lace front. I'll be honest with you, I didn't even really catch it. And so I wore her down like this, just swept to the side all day yesterday, 10 hours and she laid perfect. So if you were to experience any issue with that mini, mini lace front, I'll show you the cap in a few minutes, then you can just wear the bangs down. It has not been an issue for me in the day that I've had her, and I've had her clipped up all morning. I've been wearing her all morning for many hours. And here we go, she looks awesome. So let's talk about this color, Candy Blonde Rooted. You know, guys, you guys know I'm not a blonde. Well, if you've been around for a while, you know that I'm not really a blonde, but I have been delving into some blonde colors, and I have a really beautiful um, Henry Margot piece in a very blonde color. But overall, I don't tend to gravitate toward blondes, but the name of this one just got me. I wanted to see it so badly, and so I actually found this wig on clearance. Uh, and so I purchased it on clearance, and that's the only reason why I got it, and I'm so thrilled. I honestly figured I would be selling her. Just get her for a review. If I can get a good price on a wig, I'll get it just to review it, knowing that I can probably make my money back at least, most of my money back if I sell. Well, I love this one. I'm not selling it. Let's look at this color. It is a dynamic blend of three, well, four colors when you count the root. So I'm gonna grab my phone because I'm gonna pull up my color index. If you're not familiar, I have a website, 
heywigsister.com and I have a resources section and one of the posts in the resources section is my color index and let me share all right so we've got a 101 which is a platinum a 27 which is a strawberry blonde and a 60 which is a uh, kind of a white. So let me read to you what my color index says. So first of all, at the top of the color index, before you even get to all the codes, I kind of explain the, ba the like the brunettes and what codes are in that, the reds, etc. And under platinum, it goes from 101 to 104 and then 613. And the description says, color 101 kicks off the platinum blonde scale. John Renault's Palm Springs from their new California blondes human hair collection has a 102 in it. The closer to 101, the base here is a 101, the more cool, ashy the blonde tone is. As you move toward 104, it gets warmer. There is definitely a warmth in here from the strawberry blonde um, but there is an ashy component in this as well I think this is a really beautiful mix of ashy and warm I really really do and then that 60 I have to believe that 60 is what's tipping this so when you go down to a 60 it says silver white and these ends are absolutely lighter than the rest of this so you've got this just beautiful almost ombre effect of a kind of strawberry blonde 101 and 60 tipping it that's what it looks like to me and then the root is an eight now this color code does not include the root and i've noticed that in some of the ellen villa pieces that say they're rooted and then they don't include a darker code I hope that they'll reconsider how they do this because it's helpful to us who struggle with dark roots to know what the root is. So I met, like I said, I messaged Deborah and Georgia and I'd asked them if they could figure out what that root was for me. They literally got it to me just before I pushed play. I was going to film this and just tell you guys to look in the description for that root. What I did though was I compared this root to my girl mono in chocolate rooted. The code for that one is on the tag and it's a four. So I was holding this root up to this root. I don't know that I'm able to show it on camera here because I had to hold it really close together but I could tell right away that this root was lighter than this one. It's an eight. An eight is a medium brown. Sometimes it's called a medium chestnut brown. The brunettes go from a two to a 12. An eight is smack dab in the middle of that. And I will tell you, it does look quite dark on this. And you'll probably be noticing that here. And it's because of the light. This is a very blonde, especially down here. It's practically white. Any brunette next to that's going to look really dark. So the root does look dark. It's not severe though because it's not close to black. If it would have been a four root, it would look completely black on this wig. The fact that it's an eight gives it a brown cast to it. It's very beautiful. I'll hold this up closer to the camera when I take it off. If you don't like rooted wigs though, this is going to look really dark to your eye. If you like rooted wigs, you just don't really like it when they look black. I don't think this looks black. It does look rooted though. So once again, you can see all of the dynamic color. I had thought maybe I'd be seeing some pink in it just because of the candy name. I don't really see any pink hues. It's really just a blonde. All right, let's just talk about the wig now. Oh my gosh, you guys. Light density, little to no permatease. I think it might have a, a little bit of crimpy fibers in it. No pillowy permatease whatsoever. Pretty much a basic cap except for that lace front. Very kind of choppy layers with a very messy wave. It is absolutely adorable. I am going to do some styling with product for you at the end of this because I want to show you how you can really get this baby scrunched up. I have no product in this right now. All I did was I soaked her in water. She had bad, bad box hair. If you struggle with box hair, you've got to stick around for my box hair segment on this one. It was bad. And I soaked it in water. I shook it out really well. I scrunched it up. I hung it upside down to dry overnight and before the day before yesterday. And then I just took it yesterday and I just played with it like this. And I kind of scrunched and I I combed and I messed and I just think she's adorable, messy summer style. Casual, messy, 
perfect. So the fit on me is actually really, really good. So Ellen Villa is known for running small and I would say she fits me like she was made for my head. 22 inch circumference, that is, it fits me fine. I got, I have no issues, she's not tight, she's not pinching. And then the rest of my measurements are very petite. You're gonna have to look in the description for all of my measurements to compare them to yours. But I, you know, I'm, I'm not a petite. Uh, petite wigs are too small on me. This fits me awesome. I get tremendous coverage. All of my bio hair is covered. The ear tabs come all the way down to my ears. Very, very good coverage. I can totally tuck this one because the ear tabs give me just enough clearance, but I don't have bio hair showing issues. It's perfect. I love it. And this bang, I'm not a bang girl. I don't tend to like bangs. It's really actually the perfect length for some swooping, for some, you know, a little bit of coverage. I think this actually is perfect for bang wears and non-bang wears. I think it kind of hits both of those just right. I don't get a very much extra cap up here. So if your measurements are a little bigger than mine, I really think you're going to be okay. Actually, she's not even pull, cinched all the way out. I don't really have her cinched in a ton, but these ear tap, these are cinched in a little bit. And she's comfortable. So if you're a little bit bigger than me, I think you can wear this. I'm not sure that an average large could wear this, but I really think if you're, you know, 22 and a quarter, I think you're going to be fine um, for sure. So let's just take a look at this cap. So like I said, it's pretty basic. It has the tiniest, tiniest little lace front. It almost seems pointless, but in my opinion, I'm going to probably clip her up like that every now and then. I just like that. I love that look and it will allow me to do that. If you don't want to though, I don't think there's any harm in having it there. Then you've got your um, the ear tabs with the stays in it, extended nape, typical Ellen Villa cap. Uh, I love Ellen Villa. I love their wigs. They fit me really well and I find them to be super comfortable. I love that they're lowish density um, and I just never feel overwhelmed by the hair in an Ellen Villa wig. And their fibers I think are great. My girl monos are workhorses. They go and go and go and go. I expect the same out of this one. So no poofy pillowy permities. She does have some shorter hairs underneath the first layer. They don't stick up to my notice, I don't notice them sticking up like return hairs, but what it does is it gives it just a little bit of lift without giving it permatease. So I really like the silhouette and the profile of this one. It doesn't lay too flat for me, which honestly, that's probably one of my biggest struggles with shorter wigs like this. If they're too low density and too flat, um, I just don't think they look good on me with my round face. I think of Kira Mano by Belle Madame. That one just didn't suit me. She was so low density, so flat. This one is probably just a slightly longer than that one too, but it just has like a little bit of lift, which is perfect. It just absolutely flatters me. I think this would be flattering on a lot of people because of the length. It kind of goes down to the chin and just has really nice waves. All right, so before we go outside, so you can see this color outside, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna grab my stuff over here. I'm going to show you just a couple of tips. All right, so first of all, I did post about this wig um, on a Facebook group, and I had a response from someone who had purchased this and said the box hair was so bad on it that she can't even wear it. And she bought it on clearance too, and so she can't return it. And I'm assuming the reason this one was returned was for the same reason. The box hair was too bad. And I gotta tell you guys, it's a it's a critical wig wearing skill, learning how to deal with box hair. Learning when to know if box hair is manageable or not. On a clearance item that's non-returnable, it's kind of a moot point. But if you were to purchase this, I have a feeling this might get returned a lot if box hair is a common issue because a lot of people are worried they can't make it look good. I am thrilled that this one had as bad a box hair as it did. I'm not even kidding because I can show you guys some things. Okay, so my first tip, if she doesn't have enough wave for you uh, and enough curl, I recommend you try a sea salt spray. The one I happen to have is the Aesthetica one, uh, but I have a feeling any sea salt spray will do, even ones made for human hair. I just don't have any others and haven't tried any, but I, I hear from a lot of wig sisters and I hear that kind of you can use any. But what I recommend is you take sea salt spray and then what you do is you just spray it It'll give it texture 
and you can scrunch and you can get more of a messy beachy wave out of her just by doing that and I have a review of this sea salt spray it works great I don't love the scent it's not overpowering it's not like super strong I just wish it were more floral it's not coconutty either though and um, it does coat your wigs it's gonna make the wig feel a little dirty it's gonna make it feel like you've got product in it um, you can't avoid that if you want product to work and actually shift a style then you're gonna deal with that you're either gonna have to just be okay with it or you might have to wash it more often but just doing that is and I promise you I didn't put any of this in before the video I'm showing you a, a wig out of the you know just having used water and scrunching but doing that and just messing with her you might have to use you know quite a bit you get her damp and then let her dry Doing that is going to give her more body, more volume, more waves, and that was just a quick, you know, if I really wanted to amp it up, I might do more than that. But I already, I have a mirror right above my camera here. Look at that. And now that will hold because it's coated those fibers and given it a little body. So if you are afraid uh, that you can't wear a wig that you have because it just is too lifeless for you, Beach Spray is probably a good product for you to invest in. The other thing I'm going to recommend is John Renault Peace Out Cream. This is a two and a half year old tub. I use it not every day, but I've used it a lot. I still have probably a little less than half in here. And it now comes in a black tub and it lasts forever. It's kind of expensive, but I've had it for two and a half years. I'm going to have it at least another six months, if not more. So it's it really isn't that expensive if you think about it that way but if you don't want to go for the beach spray you could use peace out cream to do a similar thing and kind of put it in and you can shift the bangs a little bit if you want them more side swept but either peace out cream or beach spray is going to help you a ton I promise it's going to make all the difference so that is night I give her two enthusiastic thumbs up and I am surprised you guys I don't love um, short wigs like this all the time and I really didn't know that I would like this one being a basic cap without really any cap features I don't miss them I'm, I don't miss them at all you cannot see that permatease up here well like I said there wasn't pillowy permatease but there has to be something to disguise the cap and so there's a little bit of crimpy fibers here at the part you can't see them at all. And I think that rooting helps a ton. If you got a non-rooted color, you might be able to tell. I'm not sure, but that I've found to be the case sometimes. Rooted can be a lot better in basic cap wigs because then you hide all that permatease. But I don't know. If you're on the fence, I say go for it. She's super cute and comfortable. I'm going to wear the heck out of her this summer. I really would not be surprised if I were to wear this one multiple times a week. I love her that much. All right, let's uh, get outside so you can see this color. And then if you need some out of the box encouragement, stick around for that section. Thank you so much for being here. Please like, subscribe, and comment if these videos make a difference for you. It helps me a ton. I take so much time to do these videos and your encouragement helps me. Your liking videos, your subscribing helps my videos do better on YouTube, which just helps me all around. I'll talk to you guys soon. Hey my friends, here we are outside with Candy Blonde Rooted. Oh gosh, you guys. I have probably said it in the other part of this video. I haven't filmed the review yet. I'm actually doing this outside look first. But I am in love with this color. I wore her all day yesterday and madly in love. Look at the light. Just the way that it kind of goes from a little bit of a darker to a lighter. I love this color. Beautiful. I clipped her up a little bit so that you can see the darker root. There is a tiny little lace front right here. That's the only part of it. That allows you to do that clip up if you want to, but you certainly don't need to. You can have it down. Now my hand's full with a clip and a remote, so I'm not going to be able to fix it right, but I love that you can. Beautiful, gorgeous. I'm going to make sure you get a lot of really good look at this.
we just sold our house and I'm not sure how many more of these I'm gonna get to film in front of this garage. So you can see that beautiful color right there. People are driving by staring at me. And the light tips. I can't even see my screen because the sun's out right now, so I don't know how it's gonna play. But oh, I bet it looks really good. Okay, back over to the shade. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching. All right, everyone. I have night out of the box, about to put her on. All I have done is I took the tag off her. I have not shaken her out. I have not finger combed her. This is straight out of the box. I did put it on, so I know what it looks like. I always do that. But I gotta tell you guys, I am so excited because this has terrible box hair. <laughs> and you might think that's a weird thing to be excited about, but seriously, when I get a wig that's so bad, fresh out of the box, it's an opportunity for me to help you and to show you what the possibilities are. And every time you see this, every time you see someone take a bad box hair wig and make it cute, which I'm assuming this will be cute, um, it will give you courage and hope because sometimes wigs look good out of the box, but my experience is most of the time they don't. And this one is just like that. I purchased this on clearance, so it was an open box item and I am pretty certain the reason this was returned was because this box hair and she just doesn't look like she looks in the manufacturer pictures. It could have been the color was wrong. You know, I don't know for sure, but I do know a lot of wigs get returned because they don't look good out of the box and you just don't have a way to envision whether or not you can make it look good. And then once you mess with it, you're kind of stuck with it. All right. So that's my two cents. If you're watching this, I know you need that extra help. That's why I spend the time on these out of the boxes. I think for my experienced wig wearers who just wanted to see this wig, they're already long gone from this video. So what am I seeing here? Really bad box hair. What is box hair? It's this whole flatness. Here's a little weird bump. It's flat, it's lifeless. It doesn't have any bounce or waves or like nothing because it was in a box and it was compacted against itself. And who knows how long it sat there? Who knows how many temperature fluctuations it went through in transit or in storage? So what am I gonna do? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake her out. So that is the first thing you do once you decide I'm gonna work with this wig and I'm gonna keep it. You gotta shake it out. You gotta wake up those fibers. You can do some tosses. You can put your finger through the wefting and really give it a vigorous shake. And do not be afraid, especially on a wig this length, you're not gonna hurt these fibers. So just shake the tar out of it. And then put it back on and see what you have. All right, so she's poofing up just a little bit. She's waking up. So because this one has a little bit of permatease, not much, but there's a little bit of crimpy fibers in here. And because she's mainly a basic cap, she's got a couple of cap features, which I've already talked about, I'm sure. Um, you know, you just have to wake up these fibers. Honestly, she's already looking better. now. I know it's hard to decide, so you know, time and experience is gonna help you get here. If you can afford to play with a few wigs so that you can learn these things for yourself and then sell them if ultimately you don't like how they turn out, uh, I recommend trying that because what will happen is you're gonna get stuck in this endless cycle of returning wigs and never finding a wig that you can wear because you're too afraid to try some of these things. So as much as you can, if you get to a point where you buy a wig and you just really wanna like it and you think you might, maybe just take that leap. So you're gonna shake it out. Now, the next step for me is 
to spray either to soak it in water or spray it down with water. I think for this one, I'm actually going to soak her in a tub of cool water, tub, a sink, whatever, um, of cool water because I just see how flat she is, how much um, kind of the waves have been flattened out. I think that's really going to help wake her up. You, you could just spray her with water with a spray bottle, which I do often. Spray it really well and, you know, shake it out and scrunch it up. And then you take and you hang it by the tag. I just hang all my wigs that are either current rotation wearing or are in the process of being made ready to wear just on a towel rack with some hanging laundry hooks that I buy on Amazon. I've got it linked in my um, Amazon store below. I, I have a link to that. So if you want to know which ones I use, but um, so I think I'm going to soak this one just to really help her out and then we'll see what we've got. So you've already seen that in this video. I can't predict the future. So I really hope that helped and, and did everything it needed to do, but I will have told you what I did with her in that video, but this is the dilemma and I'm just going to keep on doing these out of the boxes for you guys. So you can see the possibility. Honestly, I think she's going to be adorable and you can always take product and do more scrunching to, to really amp up the style. I really hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know if there's any questions that you have or suggestions for videos. I'm always open to them. I'll talk to you guys soon.